Hello, welcome to another session of Java today. I am Sri from CBTU. In this session, we are going to learn about control flow statements, break, continue, return. These are branching statements. In general, when a program is run, the statements or each lines of code inside the Java source file are executed from the top to bottom sequentially. Control flow statements help making decisions by certain criteria. Break up the sequential flow of execution based on the decision making, boolean condition true or false, enabling conditional execution of a particular blocks of code. If true, execute. If condition, else, jump to the end of the if then statement. Java control statements are if then, if then else, switch. These are Java decision making statements. For while, do while, these are looping statements. Break, continue, return, these are branching statements. In this session, we are going to learn about branching statements. Break, continue, and return. Break. Break statement has two forms, labeled and unlabeled. We have seen break in unlabeled switch statement which can also be used to terminate a for while do while loop. Let us take a switch case with break demo. Java switch statement is like if else statement. Executes one or the other condition based on the switch input. In general, case after the case is evaluated even after the first match is met, unless break is used inside the case to exit the switch loop. Possible values are listed using the case labels. These labels in Java may contain only constants. Execution will start after the label corresponding to the expression inside the brackets. An optional default label may also be present to declare that the code following it will be executed if none of the case labels correspond to the expression. So in this demo, we are sending an argument, we are parsing it to integer and that is marks and the marks variable goes to uh, switch as parameter and here the case and the labels if the marks are 90 it will print this message your marks on the rank without break it continues to the next case this is the default case at the end this is executed when above cases are not met let us go for the demo. The code is here. Let us save this as break demo. Let us compile this. It's compiled. Let us run this. This program is expecting integer as input. Let us see what happens if we don't give any input. Uh, it thrown the exception that arrays index out of bounds exception. This program is expecting a numeric and let us say we give some string ABC. This gives number format exception as it is trying to parse the input to integer and which doesn't happen. Okay, let us give the numeric input 90. Okay, it printed your marks and the rank and because of the break, it uh, the program exited. So let us see, I'm going to comment all the breaks and compile this. is compiled. Let us run this. See, without break, the first, this condition is met, this label case 90, and it printed this. It continued to the next cases and printed all the outputs. Let us give an input of 80. 
then this condition is met at uh, second case and uh, and beyond that also it printed so if again is 70 okay 70 and uh, the last default one it printed let us add breaks under each case let us compile okay so let us see let us input 70 as marks then it prints 70 and breaks out of the loop okay next we'll take the continue demo in this a specific condition is met it will continue to loop if it is not met it will print the output so this is to print uh, odd numbers the continue statement skips the current iteration of for while do while loop also let us take this demo so the code is here so let us save this okay let us compile this Okay, it compiled. Let us run this. Okay, by commenting this continue statement with this if condition, so it printed all the numbers from 1 to 10. So let us uncomment this. Save. Compile again. run it okay it printed the odd numbers okay let us take a return demo return statement is used to explicitly return the value from a method called class will process and transfer the control back to the caller of the method it is like a jump statement the data type of the return value must match the type of the method's declared return value. If a method is declared as void, it doesn't return a value. Let us try this demo. Let us save this as return demo. Here this class rectangle has method set dimensions and get area methods. Set dimensions will take the input and pass to the this class variables. And get area method it will return the area by multiplying the length and the breadth. In this class we are taking two input arguments and we are passing them to integers. We are instantiating this rectangle class and calling this method set dimensions and sending the parameters and calling this get area method to get the area calculated and returned. The same is printed here. Let us compile this. Done. So let us run this. Okay, it needs two parameters, two integers. Let us send 5 and 6. Okay, the area is calculated by multiplying the 5 and 6. Let us send 12 and 13. 12, 13 are 1, 5, 6. This is the output. Here you see the data type of the return value must match the type of the methods declared return value so this is returning an integer and this is captured in the integer area thanks for watching